Today's video is brought to you by ablmerch.com. Use promo code 1776 to get 20% off your next order. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the Derek Chauvin trial, possibly and quite frankly, probably being tainted by the juror Brandon Mitchell. He is not who he said he was during the selection process. There were a few questions asked of each juror before they got selected. Now, two of the questions surrounded Black Lives Matter marches and protests, whatever you want to call them. The question was, have you attended any kind of Black Lives Matter march in Minneapolis? And the other one was, have you been to anything that, you know, is, is similar to this? You know, Black Lives Matter or George Floyd or something like that. And Brandon Mitchell, the juror in question, said, nope, never done it. Never have done anything like that. And then he started talking to the media. He started getting his face out there and he started to, he started to become more well known. So when he put his face out there. And people know his name and they know kind of what's going on. Now they're going to dig into his background. And they found one picture and then they found another picture and more pictures. Let's put one on the screen right now. This is of him on the far right with a BLM hat and a BLM shirt. And the shirt says, get your knee off our necks. And it has a picture of MLK in the center and then BLM on the bottom. And like I said... He had the Black Lives Matter hat to match. Now, that picture was taken at a quote-unquote March on Washington. They want to call it a March on Washington and kind of shield it as being something about MLK, all this, that, and the third. The name of the march was Get Your Knee Off Our Necks. Now, who was a person that had a knee on their neck? Think about it. It's, it was George Floyd. And this guy, Brandon Mitchell, is from Minneapolis. He lives out there. So just put two and two together. Now, that picture was surfaced at the same time when Derek Chauvin is saying, hey, we're going to do an appeal, which that was going to happen automatically because, I mean, the case to get convicted on all charges, second degree murder, third degree murder, manslaughter, I mean, it's just a little bit too much. An argument can be made about him having a knee on the net too long or improperly done or was it trained by the department? How was it trained? Did he do it improperly? That is an argument that can be had, and it makes sense to have that argument. However, second-degree murder, really? I mean, I think that they went over the top to find them guilty on everything. But before the guilty verdict came, I'm like, okay, you're going to have some jurors that are just going to do that because they don't want to throw their lives away trying to do the right thing, in my humble opinion, which is not finding them guilty on all charges. Maybe the manslaughter, maybe, but not all charges. But there's a different thing that happened beyond what I was thinking about. Well, I thought about it, but not really. You have jurors in there who were going to say guilty no matter what because they wanted to enact revenge on Derek Chauvin. And this guy maybe fits that particular profile more than just saying, you know what, I don't want to risk my life because they going to keep coming after me and I said that he was innocent and now my life's in danger. I don't think that was the case. I think from the very beginning, he wanted to go ahead and find Derek Chauvin guilty. Now, from what I'm reading, they were asking the juror, hey, did you know, you know, uh, about that shirt? Did you know kind of what it was or whatever? He's like, nah, man, I really didn't know. But the thing is, he wore the shirt again. He has a podcast. And if I can find that picture, I'll place it on the screen. He's done interviews with the podcast logo in the background, so he can't say that it's not him. He can't say anything about that. He was just saying, as far as a march in D.C., he admitted to going, but he was like, oh, it wasn't about George Floyd. Really? It wasn't about George Floyd? You have one to get your knee off our next T-shirt at the march in D.C. Then you had it on again at your podcast, probably in Minneapolis, right? And... At the march in D.C., George Floyd's brother spoke. I mean, let's just stop playing games. Let's stop playing games. But aside from that, you also have the fact that it was going to be hard to find an impartial jury regardless. It's, I mean, they could say, okay, stay off the Internet. Don't go on social media. Don't, you know, read your Facebook timeline. Don't watch the news or whatever. 
they can say that, but how can you miss this? Even if you're not a TV watcher, even if you don't listen to politics or news or anything of that sort, even if you don't do that, how can you miss it? If you live there in Minneapolis, it's outside everywhere you go. It's all around you. You're hearing these sirens going off all the time. Riots are happening. You can't miss it. If you leave your house at all, if you peer outside your window, you're going to see it. You can try to avoid all the George Floyd stuff, but it'll come straight to you. If you live in Minneapolis, you have to see what's going on. You have to be aware of what's going on. And this guy, Brandon, I think his name is Mitchell. He, there's no way that he didn't know what was going on. There's no way he didn't know what that March was in DC before he went. You got a whole podcast when you're wearing the shirt, you're sending the message, you're going on TV, talking to the media, you're trying to become popular. You're trying to become somebody that is a voice in the so-called movement. These are how other people have kind of, quote unquote, come up. People like D-Ray and the BLM people. That's how they came up. Something tragic happens. You get a lot of media attention. You already got a podcast. So you want to speak. You want to be in front of cameras. That could be what this is. But in the process of trying to do that, in the process of trying to come up and, quote unquote, grift, as the cool kids would say, you might have ruined the whole trial for yourself. So, I mean, was it even about just trying to get some revenge on Derek Chauvin? Was it about trying to get the quote unquote right decision or was it more about you trying to become famous, sir? You're going on TV talking. What are you thinking about? You don't have all your bases covered. If you're going to say, well, I've not been to a rally. I don't know anything about the case, but you got pictures of yourself wearing t-shirts that that say the exact opposite. What are you doing here, sir? But as I close, I want to say this. I think that this case should get overturned or there should be some amendments to it. I mean, to get convicted on everything, I think that's silly. And I think that it was going to be impossible for him to have a fair trial. Impossible, especially in uh, Minneapolis, anywhere in Minnesota, really, it it would have been impossible. This was such a big thing all over the nation, especially right there at the epicenter of it. It was going to be impossible. But when you have evidence of a guy lying, not telling the truth about who he is, Basically, a BLM activist, somebody trying to get attention. Now, I mean, you got some rock solid evidence that's going to work in your favor. Although Derek Chauvin's lawyer did not include the jurors, I guess you would say misconduct and the appeal paperwork, it'll definitely work in his favor. Okay, it'll definitely work. He's going to mention it in the appeal process if that's something that he could do. If he can go out there and talk and give an argument to the judge, if I'm not mistaken, and it won't be a jury. But if he can give the argument to the judge and talk about You know, you got this juror talking about, well, I don't know anything about the case, all this and that, but you got on the whole BLM shirt with the get get the knee off our neck. You have that going on and other things that are happening. Maxine, I almost forgot about Maxine Waters talking about, we want the right decision. It's got to be murder. If it's anything less, we're going to be more confrontational. People like Joe Biden talking about, oh, well, we got to get the right decision. I know that they have been sequestered, all this and that. You have all of that stuff going on, all of the pressure, all of the violence, the media. You got the New York Times writing a piece talking about, well, we don't know who they are, but here's a little bit about them. Trying to soft dox them. When you have all that going on from the mainstream media to the politicians to jurors that are lying about who they are and just, you know, a climate of wanting to enact revenge on police officers defunding the police and things of that nature to have a fair trial in a case like this is near impossible. So I think that he'll get at least some relief when it goes to the appeals process. Will he get off totally scot-free? I doubt it, but he'll get some relief in my humble opinion. And if anybody's upset on the other side, we'll thank your man, Brandon Mitchell for halfway making it happen. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that the juror in this case may have sealed the appeal for uh, the defense? Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. Will it make a difference at all? Will Chauvin get any time off his sentence? Will he be successful in the appeal process? Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. You guys pretty much know where I stand. I think that the whole process was unfair from the beginning. It was going to be impossible for... Derek Chauvin to have a totally fair trial. Okay, you're going to have some of the jurors there that will watch the evidence and make an informed, rational decision. 
But you're going to have some that say, you know what, he did it. I don't care nothing about this evidence. I'm going to vote guilty right away. No deliberation, no waiting, no nothing. Guilty. That's it. All charges. Give him the, just throw him, put him up under the jail. That's what they thought from the very beginning. So like I said, I think there will be relief from the appeals process, although it may not be get off, Skype free, that type of situation. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.